Spider-Man No Way Home, the third in the uh, Home trilogy for Peter Parker, Tom Holland, and Marvel, uh, obviously paired with Sony. And this is the second biggest opening of all time behind Endgame. Is that right? Yeah, second biggest domestic opening weekend, two hundred sixty million, ahead of uh, in Avengers: Infinity War, in, ahead of Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Obviously, count the theaters up, do the inflation math. It's not quite apples to apples with any of this stuff, but yeah, it's the second biggest uh, opening weekend for money and uh, third biggest global. Uh, worldwide box office as well alongside that i think actually even more interesting maybe this got the rare a plus cinema score spider-man no way home did only the uh fourth mcu film to do this alongside avengers one endgame and black panther uh it makes sense that there is such a response a reception to this because again the trailer was the most watched trailer of all time right there just was a really effective amount of hype built up for this spider-man film i think obviously as we know spider-man the most popular marvel character really forever like it's always been this way and the mcu has obviously helped helped with this so more spider-man's gonna be successful but i kind of underrated the uh nostalgia play of it all with obviously connecting to other past iterations of sony spider-man which is heavily in the marketing. There's no secret about that. Like all the villains are in the trailer, in the posters, right? And seeing this kind of box office response, uh, Omicron be damned, you know, it uh, definitely speaks to kind of the rare uh, situation that this kind of, this level of blockbuster uh, it was, is. Yeah, it, uh, I have to say, I was pretty blown away by the movie. Um, I thought it was super enjoyable. And uh, for a movie that, similar to Nightmare Alley, is two and a half hours long. Didn't feel that long to me. I think there's definitely some some points in the movie that move a little quicker than others. But uh, you mentioned how there's like that nostalgia play, right? And what, what we got in the um, trailers was the, the villains coming back. You know, uh, Alfred Molina as Dr. Octavius. Uh, you have... Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin, Jimmy Fox as uh, what's his name? Electro. Electro. Yep. And uh, you know, then a couple others that Reezy Fonz, Lizard, and uh, Thomas Hayden Church, Sandman. One villain from all previous non MCU Spider Man movies. And so, you know, and uh, I'm going to say spoilers from this point forward. I think when you see those villains, and you also have Spider Man into the Spider-Verse as a, another entry into all this, the thought is, are we going to get other Spider-Men in this movie? Right. And did we, Dave? We did. We did indeed. Andrew Garfield from The Amazing Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire from the Sam Raimi Spider-Mans. Heck, we even got Charlie Cox's Daredevil from Netflix. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> Hell, and which, which actually makes Great. some sense because yeah. of uh, Kingpin on the, the other side of the coin, Kingpin coming into play on uh, Disney mm-hmm. Plus's uh, Hawkeye recently. So th- this this kind of uh, opportunity to do like a multiverse thing with the Spider-Man and in a sense put like a, a checkmate down on quote past misgivings, past mistakes. It's kind of a masterstroke that Marvel has uh, been setting up for a little bit, right? The multiverse concept has been probably popularized most importantly by spider-verse as you say i don't know if the mcu necessarily would have gone down this road if spider-verse hadn't been so well received but post spider-verse of course you got marvel what if but probably even more importantly loki acknowledging the the timeline stuff right so then when we get to no way home dr strange just kind of like laying out multiverse jargon and it's not a problem for the audience. It's kind of a common concept now, you know? Yeah. Uh, I again, love, it gives all this opportunity. I loved Strange laying out the multiverse stuff because all he basically was like, yeah, you know, it, we don't really know that much. <laughs> That's basically like, oh, and everybody's like, okay. So basically we know like you can like do stuff to the multiverse, but if it goes wrong, it's bad. Like that's basically what they laid out and mm. stuff goes wrong with it. Um, we'll, we'll, I think we'll get to the, the choice to even like enter the multiverse because i, I want to 
explore that a little bit and maybe in some critiques, but it was a lot of fun, man. Like I have to say, I think the thing I liked most about this movie was getting these characters back and having them, especially obviously Doc Ock and Green Goblin, just come back and be completely revelatory to this yeah. uh, Spider-Man world. You know, and I think the choices to um, have them interact with Peter the way that they did, they never, neither one, and neither, none of them were all totally bad the whole time. You really got to see them yeah. um, interacting with him on a human level a lot of the time, or not a lot of time, but for good chunks of the movie. And I think right. that really helped. And then once you get all of them together, once you get all the Spider-Men together, that's obviously when the movie just completely skyrockets for me. I think it's just electric and you get some really fun performances from uh, Garfield specifically. I didn't really love Tobey Maguire in this, but it was still nice to have him back. Yeah. So I, 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 I like both of their performances. I think Garfield was just being how he's been the past few years, which is just a really good actor. And yeah, I, his Peter Parker performance was always good. You know, just the, the Mark Webb amazing Spider-Man movies had other misgivings. And Toby, you know, I, I love how he comes in, you know, in plain clothes and they make fun of him for it because Toby, it, it, so much of it's so meta, right? Like, but the Toby McGuire angle in particular, like Toby McGuire not really acting these days. Yeah. You know, he's most famous recently for being a big part of the Molly's game <laughs> expose. Yeah. You know, that, that's kind of what I think of Tom, Toby McGuire the last 10 <laughs> years, to be honest. Uh, and, but like all, all the lines, all, all, all the, uh, comments that those peter parkers make it's just constant meta references to uh what happened with their films both in and out of universe i think it's all really done well because th- i didn't have high had that high expectations going and i kind of thought this would be kind of messy and and bungle a little bit i was surprised at how high the uh, execution was for this at the end of the day yeah no i thought it completely worked um you know, I think some of the storytelling, there's some things you have to kind of just be like, oh, OK, I guess that's just how it is. I think Dr. Strange in this, while Cumberbatch is great as him, it's just like none of his decisions make any sense to me in the movie. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back to this with uh, where the movie leaves us, where the movie leaves Spider-Man. But like. It, it, it's kind of annoying that like Peter Parker can't just like be a New York, New York Peter Parker. There needs to be Tony Stark or the ghost of Tony Stark or Dr. Strange also like directly interfacing with him in the movies, you know? Uh, but I, actually, I think the most unrealistic thing of all was that uh, MJ, uh, Jacob Badalan, and Ned and uh, Peter were like, oh yeah, we'll all go to MIT together. Like who the fuck thinks they, yeah. it, them and all their friends get to go to MIT. That is completely unrealistic. Yeah, I, I agree. Any but... college, you don't all get to go. That's not <laughs> well, how it works. Especially ones that are that stature. Like, if you were just going to, like, I don't know, like a, a SUNY school, like, you might have a better shot of all going together. But they're very competitive, too. It's not like it's That's true. to get into state schools. So many applications. Um, But, so, going back to, the, like, the, the beginning, I, I really like that they pick up right after um, you know, uh, Far From Home, um, when J. Jonah Jameson who's yeah. basically Alex Jones in this world just yes. reveals Peter nice Parker's tweet. identity. Yeah. And uh, you just get right off the rip, Tom Holland and Zendaya just swirling around New York City on spider webs and uh, having a lot of fun right away. And uh, I think it really propels the story forward right from the jump. Um, I think you get some really interesting um, moments between him and uh, happy and um marissa tomei's uh uh married uh aunt, aunt may sorry not yep. mary jane um also nice to see some succession in the beginning with um arian mo yet yes uh stewie. just yeah stewie just like as the fbi agent who's uh or maybe a cia i can't remember but who's yeah. trying to like you know in- incriminate all of them and, and basically put charges on on these people uh i thought the i thought the beginning was really fun it started off really great mm-hmm. I think where, like you mentioned, um, maybe some of the stuff about like why the multiverse uh, gets ripped open doesn't totally make sense to me. But if you can get past that like leap in logic and this is a movie where you have multiple of the same people, I think you can forgive that. Then it, it really gets right back on track. 
Yeah, I'd say it, it's a bit of a walk to be like, oh yeah, Doctor Strange, the the former Sorcerer Supreme, really talented man of magic, and he fucked up the spell. That's how all this happened. He fucked up the spell because Peter was talking to him too much. Like, what? That's really what what caused it. That, that me, was it's... a bit. That was a bit eyebrow raising to me. <laughs> I guess we'll just do it right now. For me, it's the fact that he even like entertained it in the first place. Like, yeah. Doctor Strange would never ever ever do this like he would be like i'm really sorry or like fuck off but he would not just be like yeah you know what we're we're bros i'm just gonna do this one huge thing for you it's like no it's not i i felt like that was just kind of like oh yeah strange at one time after a party did this and now he'll just do it for anybody right make any sense especially because he basically like spells out the real world logic he's like you didn't think to call the admissions department you just came to me like that should have been the end of it (laughs) Yeah, it should have been the end of it. But anyways, you know, it's a superhero movie. We're going to take some leaps in logic. Um, I I thought the scene where Doc Ock shows up on the, uh, the Bronx. Trailer. Is, it, is it the LIE I think they're on or the Bronx River Parkway? One of those two. Uh, yeah, it's going to JFK, they said, I think. Yeah, um, just I thought that was completely uh, electric. And I, I Doc, uh, Alfred Molina hasn't missed a beat. Um, no, he's so good. Yeah, so I did a full rewatch of the first two Spider-Man films, and I kind of like did the YouTube clip playlist run for the rest. And what really stood out to me was one how well Spider-Man one and two stand up overall, and and part of that is because their villains are awesome, and Molina as Doc Ock is so strong. The writing for him is so great as well, and there's a reason Spider-Man two is long held up as one of, if not the greatest superhero film ever, even though it's, uh, you know, coming up in 20 years old. Yeah, like Molina is so, such a part of that. And I love just seeing more of him. I loved how like further on we get some plot beats, right? Restoring the chip that short circuits back in Spider-Man 2, getting us back to uh, like good uh, Otto. Like you get both sides of the performance. It's it, It's really fun. And like, like I like how the MCU did in that early fight, right, where the nanotechnology takes over his arm. I think it's a really smart, uh, you know, choice to make to like, kind of like quote modernize bringing bringing a Sony thing into the MCU. Like it, it just it felt really seamless. Yeah, I completely agree. And uh, I also like that basically the Green Goblin shows up and they just like cut out, and it's like you know mm-hmm. I think Strange pulls them back to his yes. Uh, like uh, underground basement or whatever it is with Octavius in the the cells and <laughs> the alligator guy is just there. Like he just found lizard. Him. Yeah. Yeah. The, the lizard guy is just there. Uh, I guess that, that they didn't want to introduce him at all. Um, but I, I liked that too, that that was kind of like the MacGuffin of this all was like, Peter has to go and like find these bad guys and like put them in these jail cells. And then I think making the, conflict being oh you know if you send them back the way that they're they're going to uh mm. they're all gonna die you know basically all these right. characters have died and they all don't want to go back to that. they all come to the recollection the ones that do die in the original movies I like how they all come to that point yeah and yeah i guess that that still is like kind of like challenging you have to kind of like buy into the the aunt may message of it all where it's like Peter trying to fix it, the fix all the bad guys from the other universes. It's like, all right, I, I guess, I guess that's your journey. Like, if you say so. That, that, Isn't that another like, thing that's like, it's like it's a bit of a, a bit, bit of a walk. But I, I, I liked seeing them temporarily be allies in yeah. Happy's apartment. Just seeing them all talk to each other, it just, just, just good stuff. Yeah, uh, you know, before we we get to that, I, I did just want to shout out. We get another like mirror world, or uh, oh, is that what it's called, the mirror world from Doctor mm-hmm. Strange, when they're like swinging through New York City, it's like falling on top of each other, and there's like uh, another dimension. I think is what it is. Yeah, yeah, it's like, like a it's in it's in your head is what it is. Um, which I, I thought was great. Um, but I feel like there's a line I can't remember which movie it is where Peter's like swinging around. He's like, "I can fix this. I can fix this." And like, I think that's why the Aunt May thing feels like it would actually work on Peter. Right. Is that yeah. he's the type of person who's inclined to try to fix something rather than just like accept that this is the way the fate is going to go. Yeah. I agree. I think he's when, also a kid too. Let's not forget. Yeah, and and that's the other thing is I think Willem Dafoe in this is just like 
throwing a, a hundred miles per hour still like the way mm-hmm. he transitions from norman being so sympathetic and confused and wanting to like help him yeah. to like unwell green yeah. goblin it's yeah. so impressive and his green goblin is maybe the meanest character yeah, <laughs> ever in really these things. dark dark sure super dark uh, Hark- the, harkens the, back to the meme yeah yeah <laughs> After everything I sacrificed, <laughs> you know, they, like, yeah. n- n- no beat was missed. I I yeah. actually liked what they did with uh, Jamie Foxx's Electro, Amazing Spider-Man Two, probably the second worst Spider-Man film, not a good film, but they did some subtle tweaks to Fox's performance as Electro, and again, it, it felt seamless. It all made sense. I I like what they did with really everyone. I mean, even like Lizard. Lizard's not really in it too much, right? We don't get much of uh, uh, Doctor Connors there, but. It's like just enough, right? He's just used just just right, and I love the introduction of Sandman when we when we meet Electro because he comes in as an ally because Sandman ultimately was good, you know, at the end of Spider Man Three. So like every, I think the, the probably the the biggest obstacle still with this film is being and there's a lot of a lot of kids grew up on the MCU at this point. Plenty of them never saw these Spider Man films. They don't know who the fuck these people are. Yeah, and you might not know who the other Spider Men are either. And yeah, you you can figure it out. It's not rocket science, but there, there's a bit of homework I think to really appreciate a lot of the stuff going on in this film, because otherwise it's just a messy loud blockbuster. Yeah, I I think it works on, I think it works on a lot of levels, and uh, you know, it's the type of thing where if you have all the background, you've watched all these movies you've cared about any of the Spider-Man or the movies before you get a lot more out of it. But I think if you're still like a 12 year old, you know, maybe even 15 year old kid who hasn't totally tuned into the Tobey Maguire ones, you're still like, I get what's happening. This green goblin is, you know, a pretty messed up bad guy. This doc Ock is, you know, good at heart, but has these bad voices in his head. Like, so you can probably still enjoy it, but yeah, I think there is like another level of enjoyment. If you have that nostalgia to the other ones for sure. Right. Um, you know, so now we've kind of gotten to the part which I think I was surprised at in the theater, but also at the same time, the more I thought about it, it made sense where Marissa Tomei's Aunt May is killed in mm-hmm. this huge fight as the the villains all turn on uh, Tom Holland, Spider Man. What? How would you feel about that scene, just in general? Uh, no, no problem for me. I guess in a sense, something like this had to happen. You know, happens to all Spider Men, right? And I, I like how uh, when you get all of them talking to each other, and how like, oh, you don't have the Avengers. Oh, yeah, my, our uncle yeah. died. You know, like they kind of like go through the cliff notes of like their traits and how they're subtly different and stuff. I guess it makes sense that uh, they wanted a May to be in there, and it's probably just to give the line, the, the, the well, great power comes great responsibility line, right? Like sure. it didn't have to happen by any stretch, but I, I think it, it, it worked, worked fine. It's not, it, it, I saw some people saying like, Aunt May deserve more, but like Aunt May is always going to be Aunt May at the end of the day. I mean, she at least has a lot more lines in the MCU than she did in, in the traditional story, traditional origin story, you know? Yeah. I, I actually was surprised at how emotional, this felt to me you know um i i definitely when i first saw the explosion and saw like peter kind of trying to grab the green goblin's grenade or like bat it away yes. um that I, was like, I was like are they about to kill on may like i was like no way and then marissa told me it's up and she seems fine and then all of a sudden she's not fine and i was like oh they're, they're gonna kill her no and i i actually felt like it was pretty devastating and watching tom holland you know, sit with that grief and especially when Zendaya and uh, Ned. So when Mary MJ and Ned show up and give him a hug on top of the, the school roof, I thought that was really moving. And um, I was really surprised that I thought how well Tom Holland acted that out. I, I didn't really, from what we've seen in things like cherry, I wasn't really expecting his acting right. chops to be what I left being impressed by, but I feel, I, I, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, did you find it emotional? Did it hit for you? Yeah, I mean, this is definitely the, the most heavy lifting he's had to do from a dramatic standpoint. That much is obvious. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then, like you mentioned, we we get the scene. Ned is a sorcerer 
uh, unknowing to everybody else, is able to open portals. You you knew right away that was Andrew Garfield, right? Oh yeah, no, I'm, that, that that was a headcan thing, right? It's like, oh, Andrew Garfield will save Zendaya to redeem himself for losing Gwen. Yeah. Oh, I saw that shit coming as soon as it started. I was like, ah, there it is. Yep, there we go. <laughs> it's happening. Uh, but Garfield really selling it once he catches her once they land just completely balling out in a sense a bit of meta meta commentary on uh how his career went with spider-man oh. how his relationship with emma stone went perhaps who can say but uh yeah i thought that was a, a great moment and i don't know if you want to get into this now but one of several like theater moments where people exploded in my theater yeah. Well, no, that I think that was definitely like the well, I, some of the villains showing it, people were excited for in mind. But yeah, that moment when Ned opens up the portal and they say, Peter, Peter, and uh, Andrew Garfield's Spider Man comes through the portal was the first time, you know, that everybody started to like stand up in my theater and like go wild. And then when Tobey Maguire shows up, you know, a, a few minutes later, mm. uh, people were just absolutely losing their shit. And I think we all kind of knew this was coming, but yeah, it was, it was raucous and yeah. Oh, so when when Garfield showed up, someone in my theater screamed Andrew Garfield, like, <laughs> like I I didn't even hear what they said, like that, that. But that wasn't the first moment. As soon as the movie started, when they were soaring around after uh, Zendaya and Tom, people were loud with that. Uh, God, there's so many moments. Man, later on, when Toby tells Andrew, uh, "You're amazing," people yep. exploded for me with that one. Uh, when Jamie Foxx makes a allusion to Miles Morales, people got mad. Of course, when Daredevil first showed up, oh yeah, that, 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 was, that was electric. Um, but yeah, and so from from Garfield's entrance, Garfield, so much of Garfield, the Gwen Stacy save redo, mm -hmm. like everything with him. Honestly, people people ate it up. Yeah, well, I think he presents as just like super charming in this, and you know, like you mentioned, they all have their different backstories, and his kind of being like. I lost when I got I was rageful and vengeful and I just kind of got tied up in doing Spider-Man stuff and never living for me, I think is uh, one that people can really like connect with and find sympathetic. And he obviously feels the most uh, the, like there's a lot of potential there for maybe a spinoff Andrew Garfield universe Spider-Man again, which is just crazy to think about. I don't know if it would no, happen. No but... chance of doing that. You don't think so? I think there's a chance. No, no way. I think there's a chance. After the way they, they set this movie up um, at, at the end, I don't think they want to take away from Tom Holland. So I Yeah, no. I think the, the interesting thing is how much does Tom Holland want to keep doing this? You know, there's yeah. a GQ oh, interview sure. recently where he said he yeah. you know, was pretty burnt out and kind of wants to just go live life and be in other things. Uh, he's 25, said he doesn't want to be doing Spider-Man past 30. Yeah, and importantly, he does not have a current uh, picture deal with Sony. Like he, he he's free. Yeah. So I Feige, hope if they do force him to come back, that he gets basically the Robert Downey Jr. treatment. Give that man fifty million bills with back end, and otherwise he's not doing it again. Because yeah. at the end of the day, he is their most valuable actor. He is their 100%. most important actor, not even question. But I think they want that. They're going to let Spider-Verse, uh, the, the two sequels, come out. And then they're going to do live-action Miles. I don't think they're, they have any interest in really retreading ground with Andrew Garfield just because I don't think there's much to gain from it. Uh, like, how, how, do you, how do you top how effective No Way Home was by doing that? Like, I, I don't understand. Like, now maybe that would be a Sony thing. Sony wants to keep going with, you know, they have the Craven movie coming, more Morbius coming out very soon. There'll be a Venom 3 maybe they want to do something and have Andrew Garfield fight the Sinister Six. I don't, I don't know. But like, I don't think Marvel MCU wants to have, have Andrew Garfield. I don't, yeah. really don't think so. Uh, I didn't, I didn't specify that, but I could see definitely him getting something. Uh, I, I think I could see it maybe being like the Pattinson Batman almost, or uh, yeah, the Robert Pattinson Batman almost where it's like this, like one or two movie thing, especially if, if they do decide to go like a gritty older spider-man like he's talked about this like vengeful side maybe there's something to explore there but i i could see him i could see rumors at least being out there that he's going to be getting his own movies especially on the sony side i agree i don't think the marvel side has any interest I, I, to be that. clear sony just wants to also have tom holland be in there in their movies <laughs> right I, this is definitely not their first choice 
using Garfield for things. Um, so anyways, we, we get to see them all interacting. I think like the scene at the school where they're coming up with the cures for each villain was like a really fun scene. Like you said, they're kind of talking about their backstories. Then when they go to the Statue of Liberty, them all talking, interacting was awesome. When they all land together, that was a huge theater moment for me. People mm. were really like losing their shit <laughs> around that. Um, and then I thought the final fight was, even though it's like, you know, Marvel, big CGI fuck fest type thing. I thought there was like some real moments in there. You know, you kind of get like the the Green Goblin, uh, Tom Holland. Like, is he going to do do Luke being bad Luke or Luke being good Luke type of <laughs> moment so, sort of thing? And yeah. Tobey Maguire getting the like, you know, dad Spider-Man. Like, yeah. Don't do his son type thing. You saw him getting stabbed in the back coming, right? Like, I thought oh. that was the most obvious thing. I was like, oh, you have your back to Green Goblin. That That's not going well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100 percent. That was telegraphed. Uh, you get the, the MJ save moment. Um, well, I mean, what else from that final scene like stood out to you? Yeah, I guess it's just like seeing the Spider-Man interact, seeing like the, the run up, right? Seeing them kind of trade. Like I mentioned the Garfield uh, Zendaya save. Like other than that, it's just, yeah, it's just kind of kind of them doing their thing, mm-hmm. right? Like it, it's nice to see more Molina because he's good being good. Yep. You know, Uh I guess the ending scene when they're on like, was it the shield or wherever they're standing? It's really just Goblin and Spider-Man. Like that was pretty cool, I guess. But then at that point, like it's like, oh, the multiverse is closing in. We have to fix this, and it's like it gets kind of like existential dread all over again. You know, Uh, I think those the little moments outside the action is probably where having all the Spider-Man together is at its, at its strongest because you just get like witty dialogue and like tons of fan service, stuff like that. Oh, that existential dread, the thing that caused the web block for Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. <laughs> um, and they, they can all relate. Um, yeah, so they, they save all the heroes. They're sending them back. And then basically the multiverse is ripping apart and Doctor Strange can't save them or can't stop it from happening and the world's about to be destroyed. Yeah. So Peter New Parker has to, has to decide, all right, no, I, I want no one to know who I am anymore, which, you know, a big plot hole in this is that Electro never knew who Peter Parker was, that he was Spider-Man, I guess I would say, but somehow he shows up in this. Oh, whatever. is that right? They, yeah. I didn't know that. They, they wanted, he knew who Spider-Man was, but he didn't know Peter Parker was Spider-Man, but ah. he still somehow shows up, whatever. They wanted Jimmy Fox in the movie. That's fine. He's in the movie. He's great. Um, so then uh, Peter sacrifices it and, you know, no one knows who he is now. Mm. He did what he should have originally done, I guess, when he started the spell. Um, you get the big moment at the end, you know, the big goodbye from Peter and Ned, Peter and MJ. And then he goes back to, you know, make them remember and chooses not to because he sees that they're happy. How do you feel about just like how the movie wrapped up in that sense? So I actually love this for for meta reasons. The multiverse is something that when you do it, you can kind of remove all stakes from your storytelling because everything can be undone. Everything can be fixed. Everything can be changed. But by having Peter have to like erase his identity effectively, it gave some stakes to all this multiverse playing. And big picture wise, I think it's a really smart way to do a reset for the Spider-Man films, given Holland's future is uncertain. And the for, you know they want to have future plans. We don't know what those are yet. This sets it up to, I mean, maybe maybe you do some gritty textbook, comic book, origin-y, soup Spider-Man in New York storytelling now. No, no Tony Stark, no Doctor Strange. Kind of why the Tobey Maguire first two are so great because they're New York movies that make sense, you know. Yep. I love that potential. So uh, this kind of reset, uh, I think, was 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 another really smart way to and and wrap this all up. Yeah, uh, I I really liked it. I'm interested to see where they go with it um, at this point, but I do like that they're kind of bringing it back to. Uh, no more Iron Man Spidey suit. This is him, you know, making right. this suit in his uh, one room apartment. Kind of harkens back to like when Maguire and and uh, moves out of uh, uh, Franco's apartment. Um, right, Harry Osborn. 
yeah. apartment in the first one. Uh, he's, you know, he's in that little one. It seems like he's probably going to have to go get a job, maybe with J. Jonah Jameson, you know, taking pictures of Spider-Man to provide mm. to the show or video or something like that. So it's, they're going back to the roots a little bit, which I think is good. And like you said, it kind of leaves a lot of possibilities open. You know, just calling your shot. Holland comes back, right? I think I think they'll get him back. I, I think... It's tough because like, I think the most part is reset. You don't have to bring back Zendaya now because mm-hmm. I don't think Zendaya wants to keep playing MJ either. Okay. Yeah. It's not not the best role. Um, I was actually kind of thinking like maybe like they take a long time and then eventually like a Holland Spider-Man comes back. I wouldn't be surprised to see him like if, if they get this deal. Maybe he messes around with some Sony stuff first and then he doesn't come back to the MCU for a longer stretch of time and then it's like a like impactful return. I'm not sure, but he's been in six Marvel movies already. It's only been five years. And yeah, it's been a lot of crazy. Time on, so so uh, just to it's kind of all, all out, out in the out on the open, right? It's really a, a clean slate. Just to lay, lay a little background, Feige did say that they are working on the next step in the Spider-Man story for the Marvel Universe. Oh, of course, Amy, yeah. Amy Pascal um, said a, a few weeks back that uh, you know the the next trilogy and, and hinted, at, you know, said Tom Holland's next Spider-Man yeah. trilogy, but then, then she, she kind of walked that back. Walked back. back. So because he's we not don't signed really, to anything, yeah, we don't really know where where things are at with this. I think they'll get him back. I do think it will be a few years before we see another Spider-Man movie in the MCU. And it'll probably be smaller scale, which would be cool. Um, I think, you know, the Spider-Man kind of needs to learn how to be uh, a real hero and not just someone that's reliant on the Stark tech all the time. Mm. But um, I, I think he's he's too big to to not just throw the bag at and say, come back. And yeah, again, the do the downy treatment with that. Yep. You know, when you have the first credit scene, when Venom goes back a little bit of symbiotes left behind. But I'm very curious to see how that would be tackled because Sony's going to make a Venom 3 because the Venom movies make a lot of money with Tom Hardy. MCU doesn't want anything to do with those Venom movies. That's kind of obvious, right? But does Sony want them to do their own Venom while that while Sony's still doing a different Venom? Like I'm 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 quite perplexed at like what the what the plan is for that. Or maybe it's truly just like something they'll just pick up one day down the line. and They don't even have to necessarily acknowledge it at all for, for a while. Who knows? But I don't think it's as easy as MCU Venom coming up soon, you know? Uh, I think they just wanted to get that black suit somewhere in there, you know, if, if yeah. I had to guess. It's a good marketing thing. Sells a lot of toys. Oh, and I, I guess for the real MCU dark uh, uh, heads out there, the... Uh, Knight character, Black Knight character that Kit Harrington plays in Eternals. Mm. The the guy he's connected to in the comics is also connected to the symbiotes. He's kind of like like the overlord of the symbiotes back in, in that in that story. And I think this is going to tie into Thor four with the villain for the God Butcher. So maybe it's not as simple as Venom versus Spider Man, but the symbiote perhaps comes to pl- comes into play in a more cosmic, comic y sense in the uh, future interesting. So some, something to think about um then the second you know uh, after credit scene is just a trailer for <laughs> yeah, um, that's new the the new sam raimi doctor strange movie yeah, coming um, out in may are how do you feel about the trailer are you excited yeah sure you know it doesn't give too much away which i like you see we get more mordo with uh uh Elijah for I saw a brief nod of uh, Casilius played by Mads Mikkelsen. Maybe he's coming back again. Who knows? Multiverse, baby. Anything's possible. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because I, I actually think Doctor Strange 1 is quite underrated as far as, you know, unremarked upon MCU Good. films go. You know, visually, I think it's quite impressive. And I mean, this is basically the sequel to WandaVision as well from a plot perspective. So uh, and Sam Raimi doing a blockbuster again hopefully that uh bears some fruit and it seems like a the a direct bloodline to what if episode four so if you haven't been watching the shows i haven't <laughs> you should go watch that you should go watch episode four of what if just to kind of get yeah. the a little bit more before may but marvel dude it's uh it's a beast it's a, you know the only thing that really brings in money other than fast and furious as well so <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah. That's a story for, uh, for a different day. <laughs> uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. We liked it. Uh, definitely um, I'm looking forward to uh, Spider-Verse 2. You know, the trailer for that has dropped and mm-hmm. that and looks good. Miles Morales live action eventually is, is my hope. So oh, that, yeah. that'll be lock, great. I'll lock that in. It's yeah. not close, but that's happening, obviously. So, uh, good, good shit, man. Spider-Man is a great superhero. Uh, 